Hey, good people. It's your old buddy Mark from Vintage Audio in Nagoya, and I've been running pretty hot over here. I'm drinking a little bit of wine. I've been stressing about the people of Ukraine and the start of World War III, and uh, my thoughts are with them primarily. However, uh, I'm wearing jeans from head to toe, and I'm feeling pretty good about this Skyatone EM606. So uh, I went in deep on this thing, replaced all the caps, and uh, did a lot of tweaking, and um, the videos are getting out of control. I'll be the first to admit it, all right? An hour and 30 minutes, what's going on? But I've edited down from about five hours down to the buck 30. So I'm doing the best I can over here, people. Anyway, skip through it. See the parts that interest you, if any of them do, and uh, get into it. Well, let's take a good look at this thing to begin with. I'm a huge fan of these, and these don't come around very often. Uh, they're, you know, the precursor to the 808, which is kind of the more black, uh, rubber, more industrial-looking things. This is clearly inspired by the Ace, uh, or the RE201 series, RE101s. Uh, it's got a real rolling look to it, and... Uh, you know, the only thing I don't like about these machines is the tape in the front. It's kind of nice to have the tape in the back, in my opinion. And I think that's, you know, this is an early one. They went to the tape in the back. Uh, it just looks cleaner if you've got the tape in the rear. But it's a really cool machine. And uh, this thing appears to be in really nice condition. So uh, let's just take another look at the bottom. We're looking great. Hinges uh, or the handles look really good. And uh, we've got a little bit of surface rust. It's not really surface rust. It's a strange thing that, uh, you know, rust appears underneath the paint and spider webs out kind of, uh, there's not much that can be done with that. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Um, but you know, it gives it a little character. Uh, we've got, uh, PA and, uh, in and out on the back and an RCA in and out, which is nice. And uh, cord wrap, pretty simple machines, but uh, they sound really good, I think. So let's open this beast up and uh, see what lurks inside. These videos probably get a little redundant after a while because it's kind of the same thing that goes on. All right, well, that's a little concerning. We got some rust coming out with that screw. Okay, what's going on behind the green door? Let's see what we got. Let's see how bad that rust is. Hey, it's looking pretty good. These are, you know, plywood cases, which are nice. They're not uh, chipboard. They're built pretty well. All right, we're dusty. Uh, we got a piece of tape that doesn't appear like it is normal. The circuit board has dropped down a little bit uh, from these little pins that hold it into place. Um, you know, certainly seen worse things. That rust is just a tiny bit right where it goes into the, the threads here, so that's not a real issue. Some tape, some cobwebs, it's got a belt on it, which actually feels pretty good, surprisingly. All right, well, let's get, uh, let's get cleaning on this thing. That always begins with a pot spray and a switch spray. Ooh, they don't make it easy to get to these pots. Could use a longer hose on that one. Let's see if we can get to these two. Ooh, they're buried. Kind of get to them from the top, it looks like. Oof, nothing's easy about this. Cleaning those heads is going to be tough to get in there. It's been a while since I've been into one of these. I kind of forgot what they look like inside. All right, feels like I got some spray in there, though. That's good. Get these from the other side. Okay, I'm going to take this outside and blow it out and wipe it out just to get the dust out. But I don't really want to breathe all this dust. So I'm going to use my little raft pump 
that you may have seen in uh, other videos. Take this beast outside and give it a good blowout. I'll be back. Okay, we're blown out and uh, blown out on the trail. What's that, Bob Dylan? Blown out and just a blown out on the trail. Tangled up in blue. Anyway, uh, we're blown out and. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to think of that song now. I really, really had, I want to figure out what it was. Blown out on the trail. All right. Anyway, you don't have to see her and listen to me try to think of that Bob Dylan tune, but uh, I think it is Tangled Up in Blue. It's a pretty good song. I'm a huge Bob Dylan fan. Uh, if any of you guys are, you know, just kind of dabbled with Bob a little bit, like, oh, he's not really my thing. Everybody's got a different taste in music, so can't guarantee you're going to like him, but I'll tell you what, I really consider Bob Dylan to be one of, uh, you know, the, obviously, as most people would, uh, one of the most influential songwriters of, uh, the, in the history of the world, for that matter. Uh, but he's got so many incredible songs. And uh, he goes through so many different periods that, uh, you know, the early 60s, kind of Woody, Guthrie, wannabe stuff. I don't even want to say it like that. But, you know, there was that period uh, in the very beginning where he certainly patterned his sound after Woody and, and uh, the other guys of that that ill. And then, uh, you know, he started writing his own music and wrote some really uh, consequential uh, protest songs. Again, I don't know, he didn't like that uh, moniker, but they're, you know, certainly were tied to that movement and some of the songs like um, Chimes of Freedom and uh, With God on Our Side and, um, you know, um, oh, you know the ones, but uh, Hezekiah and uh, um, License to Kill. I mean, these all these songs... And, um, you know, times they are changing, blowing in the wind. I mean, you, you just keep going, you know. So all that early period, so many songs that whether he intended them or not, were adopted by one movement or another. And um, so anyway, we can go on and on about Bob. But Bob is, is awesome. And then I am going to keep going on and on about Bob, I guess. So, you know, then we move into the 70s. Uh, the late 60s, you got the crap, well, we're jumping way too far ahead here. So, uh, we get into 65 when he starts to go electric and, uh, the whole thing with, you know, he's at the Newport Folk Festival and Pete Seeger, um, gets all up on the arms. I love Pete too, but Bob's going, uh, electric and people are freaking out and just half his fan base bails out on him. What did I just knock loose here? Ah, okay. What I just found is a little plastic Phillips screw head. And this is one of the things that kept this in place. So uh, we're going to have to address this. This is easy enough. There's just a little plastic clip here that pops back up. But we obviously have somewhere where a little Phillips plastic screw was uh intended to be so we're going to figure out where that went and uh i don't have any plastic screws so we're going to have to come up with something to replace that with all right so anyway we got bob going into newport and uh going electric <clears throat> bunch of people freaking out about it but uh maggie's farm i think is such an influential song too and what a lot of people don't get i don't think or didn't get at the time it's a quintessential folk song even though he's just rocking out on it you know um, but, you know, he says, all right, battery died, didn't realize it, and, uh, we're back. So, he's rocking out on it, and it's, uh, you know, everybody, everybody wants you to be just like them. 
I'm trying hard to be just who I am, and everybody wants you to be just like them. They say, whistle while you work, and I just get bored. I'm not going to work on Maggie's farm no more. And I think, you know, first of all, it's, you know, Pete's uh, a big union man, you know, and uh, it's basically saying I'm not going to work, uh, you know, I'm not going to work for these people anymore if they don't respect me and don't. So it's a folk song. And uh, I think it's him saying, listen, I've, I'm done with this. You know, everybody wants me to to do this and say that and show up at this event and be this person and the voice of generation. I'm, I'm not going to work on Maggie's farm anymore. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. All right. I'm trying hard to be just who I am. Everybody wants me to be just like them. I'm done. So awesome. First of all, and then awesome song. And, um, oh, I just remember what that song is. It's, um, uh, blown out on the trail. Uh, I was by exhaustion, Buried in the hills. Um, come in, she said. I was shelter from the storm. That's the song. Sorry. Um, okay, so anyway, Bob's awesome. And um, I kind of lost my train of thought because of uh, the whole battery issue there. I'm kind of bummed about that now. Uh, but anyway, Bob, you know, he goes electric in 65. Let's just go start from there again. And um, we got this amazing period, you know, where he's just rocking out. And uh, the songs are still incredible, and even maybe more so. Then we got the crash, uh, motorcycle crash, whether that really happened or not. And then um, comes back with Nashville Skyline, which is kind of, you know, took the world, uh, shocked the world a little bit because, you know, the Beatles were psychedelic-ish, and everybody, you know, there's a whole different thing going on, and Bob comes out with a... Uh, country album which is a little bit out of nowhere but all right I'm, I'm out of nowhere too i'm i'm really rambling here about bob but anyway suffice it to say i really love bob get into bob if you haven't if you don't really know him just dig around and jump around a little bit watch a few things uh you know you don't have to watch any documentaries or anything just listen to some of the music and uh i think you're gonna you're gonna figure it out i don't know how you would um all right, we're just going to clean up these uh, rusty heads. Are you seeing anything? So, uh, anyway, and then, you know, I love Bob so much. I've seen him so many times. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to throw a total guess here, but uh, in the 20s, uh, or well, more than that now. Uh, he comes to Nagoya, or comes to Japan every few years, used to pre-corona. And um, he, you know, would play like seven, eight, ten shows, and I'd catch the vast majority of those when he was coming through. So I've seen him, plus all the times I saw him back in America and in Duluth. I'm from Wisconsin, so I see him in Milwaukee and Chicago and Illinois and Minnesota and Duluth. And So anyway, love Bob. And uh, I got here, I got something I want to show you real quick, actually. This is, this is pretty cool. This is a poster for a Bob show that I was planning on going to. Uh, and you see he was going to play April 1, 2, 6, 17, 2021. All those shows in Tokyo. And then he had shows elsewhere too. But this was advertising for the Tokyo shows. And then COVID came. And this, so this is a flyer for a show that never happened, which is kind of cool. Um, a series of shows that never happened. It's cool that the, the flyer is here. It's not that cool I didn't get to go to any of those shows. This is a little collage I put together, but uh, this is slid down. Normally that's up there. But these are all just little flyers for different Bob Dylan events that are happening around Japan. So anyway, Bob, as long as we're looking at stuff, this is uh, all kinds of different cigarette packs from Japan. And they're all post-war. You can see peace was the... Uh, the theme of the day, peace and hope. You know, those are the two things that everybody was talking about right after World War II. So, um, kind of cool, though. Uh, we got one from the Tokyo Olympics in 64. And um, a few other things there. This is a Tabi uh, shoe, a construction shoe uh, advertisement, old sign, bike sign. Okay, anyway, we're, uh, we're way off base. Not only do I love Bob, but I love all the things that have happened because of Bob. For example, uh, I just lost him 
last year, and it just it still kills me because he's just such a good friend of mine. All right, I'm not doing anything right now, just talking. We gotta get some work done. So I'm gonna uh, take this rotisserie out here, and um, I think I don't think I'm gonna pull these knobs. I'm just gonna brush these on the machine. This thing's in really good shape, so I don't think I need to get too carried away here. Uh, before we test it, I'm going to clean those knobs so they do need to be clean. So, I just lost my buddy Billy. His, his real name's Ken Say Mori, and uh, just the best guy. Uh, he was 69, I think, and uh, sadly got cancer. He was never really a smoker or anything, but he, he owned a bar for a long time. And, um, you know, I think all the secondhand smoke maybe got to him. But, uh, Ken Say, I called him Billy. And he got the nickname Billy because uh, I couldn't remember his name. I met him. I was, I'd been drinking. I was up in Takayama. And, and uh, I kept asking him. We were talking about Bob. We, first of all, let me just tell you how we met because this is the coolest part. All right. So, uh, first of all, I met this girl, Yuko. Cute as a, oh, my God. Just uh, so cute. And kind of, uh, kind of a funky chick. She uh, was into cosplay, you know, where they dress, you dress up like little Bo Peep and shit. So, uh, but, you know, I wasn't averse to that. I was, you know, 30 years old, whatever, 30 something. And uh, she was 19 and uh, I met her in this club. And um, anyway, that's another story. But Yuko super cool, all right? So we started in a funky way, all right? She's dressing up in, in strawberry shortcake outfits and, um, you know, carrying little umbrellas and squeaky little fake voice. Me, 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 Mark, you know, me, me, me. I'm like, yeah, sounds good, you call, you know. So we met in this club. We hung out a little bit. And she's from Takayama, which is this little mountain town about four hours. Um, I don't know how you get there, but four hours away, all right? And... Uh, She's living in Nagoya, but uh, and everything's going good. We see each other for a couple months here and there. You know, it's kind of a casual thing, but it's all good. And she, one day she's like, "Mark, I'm going back to Takayama." Me, 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 me. I'm like, "Oh no, you go. Why? What's going on?" She's like, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna just speak in my normal voice. All right, uh, I'm moving back to Takayama because uh, the city's just too difficult." And she, she, you know, she's 19. She moved down here with a, no education or anything other than high school. Gonna try to make her way in the city, it didn't work out, and she's moving back to Takayama. So, no, uh, this is terrible news for me, you know, because we were, you know, even though it probably wasn't going to be a long term thing, it was sure a fun way to pass some time. I don't want to get into too much detail, but I think, you know, you can kind of use your imagination, all right? So, I'm moving back to Takayama. Oh, you're killing me. So, uh, but she said, hey, you know, there's a spring festival in March and you should come up. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'd love to check out Takayama. So uh, I book a thing. I rent a hotel for two days and uh, I'm going to go off to the spring festival in Takayama. I'm going to hang out with Yuko. It's going to be awesome and uh, everything's going to be great. So I get up to Takayama and first of all, I uh, for her birthday early she, she was still in the city when it was her birthday and uh she i said i'll buy you uh, something for your birthday but I'll, you know i don't know what to get you because i don't my taste you know uh, you, let's go shopping and i'll pick you pick out something and i'll buy it for you so she found some little cute little dress and and i bought that for her. she was so excited and, and i was too it was cute everything was good so anyway uh come up to takiyama and spring festival it's going to be a blast so uh, I booked the hotel, I get up there, I take a train, four hours, and uh, I get out at the train station, I call Yuko, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm out the train, oh, me, 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 she shows up, and she's looking so cute, she's wearing the dress I bought her, and it's just unbelievable, cute little high heels, and this blue dress, a white little shawl, kind of sweater wrapped around, and she's, you know, high heeling it through this little mountain town, and it's, uh, oh, I've got a great weekend planned, you know, uh, it's just going to be heavenly. So we set off in this town. It's filled with people. And the Takayama is a small town, maybe 50,000 people. 
in this valley in the mountains and there's a river that winds through it and there's all these little bridges and the town has kind of been preserved to some extent on one part of the town it's just this old looks like 1600s japan and wooden houses and little there's streams and water diverted running through channels through this whole town it's trickling down the mountain and everywhere you look is running water and fountains and bridges and it's just a wonderful little town we took a rickshaw ride, you know, got some food to eat, and um, we're down by the river, and the weeping willows are hanging down, and the wind's whistling through the willows, and there's there's big floats being towed through town, and drums being, boom, 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 and people, there's that kids talking, and the, the wafting smells of all the food from the market, I mean, it was just, she's holding her high heels in one hand, and daintily walking around barefoot on these rocks by the river i'm just i'm i'm in heaven you know i'm I'm thinking i'm in heaven i'm just like i think i'm this is it isn't it i mean this is as long as she doesn't talk that much this is basically heaven you know so and again i'd like you know conversing with her it's just that the high-pitched tone was a little much hope you can ever watch this your sweetheart uh so anyway uh it's all good. We're going back to the hotel, which, you know, it's great. And um, we've had a wonderful day. We're walking through the streets, heading back to the hotel, and uh, start talking about cars. I love cars. You know, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm a huge uh, Volkswagen guy and old Porsches, and uh, I like German cars primarily, all right? So anyway, I saw some kind of a cool car, and I'm like, hey, that's a really nice car, Yuko. I'm like, what kind of cars do you like? And she's like, oh, I really like... Um, Honda Civic R-Type. And I'm like, oh, that's a good car, a little R-Type. Yeah, I had an old uh, Acura Integra. I had a couple Civics in college. I love Hondas, good cars, you know. And uh, ironically, we're walking out of this alleyway, and uh, we come out this alleyway to a, kind of a main thoroughfare, and here comes a Civic R-Type. I'm like, hey, look at there, Yoko. There's a Civic R-Type right there. And the driver of this car, who's not much older than me, points at me and locks up the brakes and he's got this angry look on his face and he's screaming through the car windshield you know and Yuko grabs my hand and rips me down the alleyway and and I'm like what the hell's going on she's like mm, that's my dad I'm like oh geez what and she said I I told him I was going to Nagoya for the weekend and um he thinks I'm staying there and oh and all the phones blowing up, you know. And you got me, 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 And I'm, oh, no, you know, my whole weekend is in jeopardy here. So, sorry, people, I'm looking for uh, a little tool to pop those um, nuts off on the front there. So, uh, my dad's so angry. He, I lied to him, and he says I have to come home right now. What should I do? You know, I'm like, well... You got to go home, you know, I mean, this is where you live and, uh, you know, you got to go home. You can come back to the hotel for a half hour though, right? <laughs> Think of, geez. So anyway, she does and, you know, she's contemplating her life there and, you know, but the, the fact of the matter is she's got to go home, you know, and my week, I got this hotel room for two days. I'm up in the mountains by myself. I, oh my God, I just moved to Japan. So I hardly speak any of the language, which is fine. Get by, but. Uh, I'm, you know, this is not what I had in mind here. All right, we got just a little bit of surface rust on these. I'm going to clean these up. Uh, I think I'll just do it with this uh, brass brush here while I'm sitting here. So, <sighs> Yuko has to go, and uh, she's going to go home. And uh, so, <sighs> all right, yep, I'll see you soon. Thanks for inviting me out. Yeah. And um, she's gone. So, oh God, what am I going to do? I'm in Takayama for two days, and this place basically shuts down at 5.30. It's, it's a kind of touristy town, but it's not like any kind of a party town. You know, it's, it's aimed at Japanese families. And so, anyway, I get out on the street. It's about 8 o'clock at night, and nothing's open. It's just, it's shut down. And I found a couple people, and I'm like, hey, you know, is there any 
just bars in this town? You know, no, we don't know. We're not from Takayama. This goes on for a couple blocks. And finally, I meet somebody who's like, yeah, there's a little bar right up here or something, bar or something. Oh, thanks a lot. You know, so I go to this. Uh, we got a little bit of rust on these washers. I'd like to get that off, but the, you would think it would be able to be brushed off, but it doesn't seem to want to come off. These are plastic washers. Uh, well, I don't want to break them, so we're going to you know, put them back as they are, basically. Let me try something else on them. So, I get in this little bar, and it's a little reggae joint. You know, there's a, a Jamaican flag outside. Okay, that's cool enough. Tiny little place. And it's just the bartender. He doesn't speak any English, and I don't have much going on for for uh, Japanese, you know. But I try to explain my sorry situation, and you know, the best I could. I think he got the gist, you know. And uh, he could just see the raw emotion on my face, if anything. So... Uh, he's like, you like, uh, Bob Marley? Because he's, he's just playing Marley constantly. And I said, yeah, I like Bob Marley a lot. I said, I, I like another Bob even more. I said, I'm a huge Dylan fan. You like Bob Dylan? Oh, yeah, yeah, I like Dylan, you know. Uh, didn't quite go like this, but, you know, whatever. We were able to piece together that he likes Dylan and I like. So, I'm sitting there. I got nothing going on. I'm drinking beer and just wallowing in my sorrow. And, uh. I used to do a lot of sketching and kept a journal, and uh, so I sketched uh, a little scene from the day, you know, and that was uh, um, you go down by the water, and and uh, on a some napkin or something he had sitting there at the bar, one of his coasters or something. So I left this thing and uh, said thanks a lot for the hospitality and I said are there any other bars in town you know we kind of figured out how to draw me a little map and he said there's you know there isn't much but there's this place and there's one up here so I, I left this little sketch and uh, I headed down the road you know to see if there's another another bar where I could find something to drink and maybe I don't, a person or two because you know it was just honestly just him and I for a couple hours in there so I head down the road I peek into the first, I got this little crude map that he's drawn me, and I peek into the first place, and uh, absolutely nothing going on. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere with these washers, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that back on, even though that there's kind of a rust stain on the washer, which is, I'd much rather get that off, but uh, again, I'm not having much luck. You know, we haven't tried scraping it, but I think we're all right. We gotta, we gotta keep moving. So, uh, next bar is nobody. I just peeked through the little, you know, Japan, a lot of bars have these little hanging curtains with split in the middle, kind of half curtain, and oof, nothing there. So I go to the third bar on this little map, which is the final bar, you know, so I'm thinking, oh, God, I hope this is, this place has got something to offer. And I get in there, and yeah, there's, there's a foreigner in the back of the, of the bar, and, um, I don't know why this is not allowing me to tighten it up all the way here. Let me see if I can get this washer back first. So, anyway, I meet this guy, and I explain the situation to him. And ironically, he lives in Takayama. His girlfriend's in Nagoya, and uh, I'm living in Nagoya. My girlfriend was up in Takayama, kind of girlfriend, you know. So we kind of had a laugh about that, a Swedish guy. So, uh, anyway, ha, 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 good times. So... All of a sudden, I'm in there now. I've been in this bar for probably an hour and a half, and it's you know it's like eleven o'clock at night now. And all of a sudden, the door flies open, and this guy comes back, gray-haired guy comes flying back, and it's just me and the Swedish guy and one other guy sitting at the bar, a Japanese guy, and the door flies open. This middle-aged, older Japanese guy comes flying right back to me, and he said, "Is your name Mark?" And I'm thinking, oh, oh my God, you know, Yuko's dad's got the uncles out on, on foreigner patrol. And uh, they want to have a talk with me about, you know, dating his younger daughter. And uh, I'm like, well, I don't know. I said, uh, what's going on? You know, what do you mean? What's going on? Is your name Mark? And I said, well, I, that's a tough one. I'm like, what? Uh, what's, this, who, what's the situation? You know, who are you? And he's like, what do you mean? You know, is your name Mark or not? And I said, well, what's, what's going on? I said, let's start there. What's, what's up? I was just at bar three and I saw a picture that 
somebody had drawn, and I asked about it, and the guy said, you're a big Bob Dylan fan? Uh, did you draw that picture? Are you a Bob Dylan fan? And I said, I'm a huge Bob Dylan fan. Uh, is your name Mark? And I said, well, do you know Yuko? And he's like, Yuko? H who? And I'm like, okay, yeah, my name's Mark. And he's like, oh, I'm so happy to find you. I've, I live in this town. There's never any Bob Dylan fans up here. Can I talk Bob Dylan with you for a little bit? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, I have a seat, man. You know, so uh, this is Ken Say Mori, all right? So Ken Say and I start talking Bob, and he's a huge fan. I mean, he's a huge Bob Dylan fan. And, uh, you know, his English is pretty good, you know, he, and he wrote his master's thesis on Bob Dylan's impact on uh, m music and culture, and the, he wrote this thesis in the late 70s. I mean, the guy's a huge fan. So, uh we end up partying all night. I had a hard time uh, remembering his name, Kensei Mori, which isn't hard for me now. But at the time, it just was Kensei is not a word or a name that you ever really know, you know. So I'm like, well, sorry, man, what was your name again? He's like, Kensei, Kensei Mori. You know, and he's talking fast. He's all excited. And we had just got done talking about Billy the Kid as being a good album and an unusual soundtrack, and, you know. So the Bob Dylan, Billy the Kid soundtrack and Pat Garrett. So uh, I said, can I call you Billy? And he's like, yeah, you call me whatever you want, man. You know, I'm like, all right, Billy, I'll call you Billy. So from here, from that day forward, I called Ken say Billy. And uh, everybody, you know, his friends like, why do they call you Billy? You know, well, anyway, Billy and I became super good friends. We partied all night and, um, uh, I, you know, we left each other at like five in the morning. I, he's stumbling down and he's like, take it easy, man. I'm like, yeah, Billy, thanks a lot, man. Good times. You know, he's like, good times. I'm like, yeah, Billy. He's, he's walking backwards, waving. We'll see you soon. I'm like, yeah, see you soon, brother. I'm coming to Nagoya. I'm like, all right, man, we'll party. You can crash at my place. All right, man. And I'm like, yeah, Billy, take it easy. And all of a sudden he falls into one of these little side, you know, it's not a canal. It's just like a, a little two foot wide, one and a half feet, two feet deep, but fast water, fast moving water running down these little channels, you know, falls into this thing and bam, I'm like, Jesus, Billy, you all right? I'm all right. I'll see you in the Goya. I'm like, all right, man. You know, so that's Billy. And, uh, this is 17, 18 years ago now, you know, it was right when I first moved to, to Japan. So, uh, Billy and I became best, uh, best of friends, and we spent tons of time together. We went to probably 20 Bob Dylan shows together, and just most recently up at Fuji Rock Fest, I, I packed up my motorcycles, about a five, six hour drive on bike, maybe even longer. He was already up there camping. I just went up for the weekend, or for the Sunday show for Bob. I came up Saturday night, went to see Bob on Sunday. Jack Johnson opened, great show, Billy and I just partying and hanging out, he's just an awesome guy, all right, uh, at the time he just moved back from uh, Kyoto, which is another really cool town in Japan, kind of a, a, an old town, it used to be the capital, And uh, but he opened up a bar called Desolation Row, and it was just a fun place to hang out, and uh, so anyway, Billy was the best, and um, Yuko and I would still see each other for many years. I would go up and um, uh, I'd go up to see Billy and say, hey, you know, Yuko, I'm coming up. Are you free next weekend? Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you. You know, I'm like, all right. So she'd, we'd hang out for the weekend and uh, it was all good, you know. I bought that Porsche. I was going up quite a bit and uh, spending time with her. She's a blast. Uh, but then just last year, she got married finally and moved to Tokyo and um, it was a sad day, you know, but, uh, it is what it is. So, but Billy, unfortunately, if you're a Bob Dylan fan, you'll get this, you know, it's an unusual song, which, um, time, uh, things have changed. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but I used to care, but things have changed. So I got a call from Billy and I'm like, Hey man, when he sounds kind of rough, you know? I'm coming through from Tokyo and I crash at your place this weekend. I'm like, yeah, you know, this happened quite a few times a year. You need to come down and spend a weekend. And uh, this is COVID time, though, so it's a little unusual, you know. And uh, I'm like, yeah, of course, man. You know, looking forward to seeing you. It's been a little while because of COVID and so on. And I see, all right, you sound pretty rough, man. You guys don't have COVID, do you? Jokingly, you know. And he's like, 
no, but things have changed. And uh, he used to speak in lyrics all the time, you know. Um, whatever we would, we'd be talking about stuff. And, you know, was, a lot of times there was a lyric or two being passed around. So, oh no, I'll tell you when I get there, you know. So he showed up and uh, he had gotten uh, throat cancer and it, you know, it caught it too late. And uh, he was in chemo and getting their treatments. And, but unfortunately he just passed away recently. Um, so anyway, that's Billy. Uh, an awesome, awesome dude, and uh, I, I didn't, I, I knew how much I was going to miss him, but, uh, you know, you, you just can't prepare for it, really, uh, but I, it was such an important part of my life, going up and spending time with him, and um, I forget there, who it is, uh, uh, here, it's right over here, I'll grab it, uh, Mike Bones, who I really don't know, but um, pretty sure it was off this CD. I just picked this thing up the other day. But uh, I was kind of impressed with this, actually. It's from the 90s, but it's a pretty good CD. But he says in here, get yourself a place. Uh, get your, find yourself a place, uh, a comfortable house, a place we can get comfortable. And then build a big gate around, big yard or, or big fence around it. But make sure you leave a gate. Uh, which I, I like that line, you know, so you can see your friends, your friends can get in, you know, and it's a little metaphor for whatever, but it's all good. But, uh, and then find a, a place where you feel safe and comfortable and, but don't go there too often, you know, but that was Billy's, uh, bar for me. I mean, I just, and it was Billy, you know, I mean, it was, I'd go up and we'd spend all night, uh, I'd show up into town, and uh, we'd go get some dinner, and then, well, probably should open the bar up. There's no set hours on this bar at all. You know, some nights we wouldn't even open it, you know. But it was where all the music was, so we tend to just open it up at some point. And other times, he would just lock. I'm sick of people. He's like, when these people leave, we're just going to lock the door, you know. So he'd shut the door, and we'd just sit in there, and uh, we could hear people outside and knock, and we had Bob crank. They know we're in there, you know. But... Uh, we're closed. So we just sit and talk, Bob, and listen to music and drink, you know, drink this bar empty. So uh, anyway, I really miss Billy is what I'm trying to say to you here. Um, not many guys like this anywhere in the world, but let alone in Japan. And uh, so the what another point I want to make about this, though, is that... Uh, had you know the the impact that Bob has had is immeasurable in so many ways because Billy has been for the last twenty years a major part of my life and uh, r really I, I've got so many wonderful memories and I learned about Japan and people in general from him and uh, you know. We shared so many good times, and I mean, we traveled together a lot, camping and up to Fuji and the countless Bob shows and other shows. You know, we went to see uh, oh, um, Boz Skaggs and anybody cool that came through town. We'd go see shows together. So, but none of that would have happened, honestly. We can we can directly correlate our friendship to Bob Dylan because I wouldn't. Uh, had I not mentioned Bob Dylan and talked to that bartender about Bob Dylan, he wouldn't have mentioned to Billy that there was a Bob Dylan fan in the in his city. He wouldn't have gone seeking out this foreigner who likes Bob Dylan. I mean, you know, I don't. We can stop here, but you know what I'm saying. None of that would have happened without Bob Dylan. Ken say would have spent his night somewhere. I would have wandered off somewhere, and this friendship would not have happened. So thanks, Bob. You know, that's all I got to say about that. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm sure he, he knows to some extent because, you know, he reads Bob Dylan. Now I'm talking about, he reads, he, he understands his impact, you know, but I wonder if he really understands those types of things, you know, that, uh, that, he's had his impact is down to individual relationships you know 
And then all the moments that we've spent at shows together and we talk about them afterwards and get excited for them. And then during the show, we have a competition of Bob, you know, does everything different every single time. So it's hard to know what song he's playing right away because the versions are always a little different. So Billy and I would kind of, I'm like, it's, uh, oh, this is, uh, you know, whatever, what's, what's a song that, some obscure Bob tune that Bob would, would throw out of nowhere, you know, and I'm like, this is uh, that tune, you know, and Billy's like, no, no, it's whatever, this song, I'm like, no, listen to it, and then Billy'd be right half the time, I'd be right half the time, see, I told you, you know, and uh, so anyway, we just enjoyed all these different things related to Bob, so that's the kind of impact I think the guys had, all right, I think uh, if you're not a Bob fan, you're like, Jesus, dude, enough about the Dylan here. Are you going to work on this machine or what? So, okay, uh, I have been, though, right? We um, we kind of toothbrushed these things. Ooh, they don't look that good, actually. Let me uh, get this one a little more. Uh, but we cleaned the heads, we toothbrushed these things up, and uh, we have sprayed the pots. Uh, we got to address that... Um, that hanging, low-hanging fruit there in the form of a circuit board. Let's see what that is. All right, the knobs are a secondary concern at this point. Oh, she's starting to look good, though, isn't it? I like these machines a lot. Let's see what we can do about this board. My guess is somebody added this tape just as a precaution so that it it didn't touch anything metallic because it was hanging down, but it doesn't really make sense because it's the tape is on the top, unless he's worried about it just bouncing around. Um, let's see if we can just snap this back into place. That's that. All right, the board snapped back in. You know, I think we're going to test it out and see what's going on. Oh, this side is, is dropped down too, so let's see if we can get it up in here too. There, it snapped back into place. That tape just came off. You know, it's strange. I've seen this type of tape on other machines, and it could act as some kind of a shield actually, just uh, for sound. Um, we're going to test it without the tape and see if we think it should have tape when we're done with that. Let's uh, get a tape in here and see how this baby sounds. I'm going to hook it up, grab a tape, I'll be back. Okay, heavy on the storytelling and a uh, little bit light on the concentration. So I forgot a couple steps here and I'm going to do that before we test this thing out. So uh, those are not that consequential in the you know big scheme of things but uh, we do want to just clean these out like we do I'm not going to go back up for a final ream this time I've made my mind up on that you know, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to break that habit I really want to go back up into each one of those but I'm not going to it doesn't mean anything Okay, and I haven't even addressed anything back here as far as wiping or cleaning. And I think I'd like to touch up these rusty screw heads. But uh, we're going to leave it at that for now. And we'll see if it works. We've got to clean up these on the outside. Uh, you know, I'm just... Uh, this situation here. I'm just uh, kind of bumming about Billy, you know. <laughs> Sucks. Uh, you gotta just deal, but uh, um, it's still pretty raw because it's pretty fresh and he's just a good guy. So we missed the guy. I think I got a delivery here. One second. I can hear a delivery truck. Okay, it was a delivery man and uh, I'll show you what I got because I'm kind of excited about this. Um, I just bought this the other day on kind of a, it's like a Mercari, you know, basically um, some Japanese uh, 
seller's marketplace type thing. And uh, I had one of these uh, before and really cool. Look at that. It's a Roland VX33. It's just a really simple little three channel mixing amp uh, with an onboard reverb. Oh, they just got such a good look to them, don't they? I love this thing. So we'll clean that up and uh, I'll do a video on that later. Maybe we'll clean that up next. Okay, uh, let me hook this up. I'll be right back. Okay, here's our maiden voyage. Let's plug this baby. We got it plugged in. Let's turn it on and uh, wish me luck. Let's turn repeats down. Check, 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 check. Ooh. Oh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Check. We had a pretty significant crackle there. Check. 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 All right, it's doing things all on its own. We're going to have to go deeper. Uh, I don't like the sound of those crackles. So, let me turn my amp off. And we're going to have to do some investigation. Now, when we got this, remember we had a massive piece of tape on it. We had the board hanging down and uh, which is not how we like boards but we're going to let the board hang down once and try it again and see if if there might have been some reason for that check 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 let's try this other channel once check I can hear, it's probably hard for you to hear, but I can hear old testing that's been done on this tape. Check. 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 Are you hearing that? I can hear check. One, two, check. 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 So that tells me the tape is not, we're not erasing the tape, which is a problem. And obviously we're not recording on the tape. Check, check, check. All right, we can hear, uh, you know, like I said, the tape is not erasing and we're not, we don't have any sound. So clearly got some issues. We, uh, and these, if I remember right, are not easy to work on at all because that board is buried so much. So, uh, but we got to fix it. So we're going to have to try to figure out what is the dealio? Oh. Okay, well that was an interesting find. Check, check. Check. That's strange, isn't it? If I move the whole circuit board just a little bit, okay, uh, that's enough uh, swimming in Danger Bay. Okay, we're gonna have to pull this top cover off in order to get to the board and then see what's going on there okay we've unplugged it and uh, I really wasn't in the mood for this right now I was really hoping for a cosmetic cleanup and uh, keep on rocking but it's typically not how it goes so again we're unplugged I think we need to remove this upper portion in order to get a good look at that circuit board so let's do that and i believe these 
four screws might be enough. We got two Allen heads here and two screws on the back. Might be enough to uh, afford us a better view. All right, put those in there. Let's see, it's gonna be hard for you to see what's going on here, but uh, let's see if we can, how far we can wiggle this thing out. All right, I see a couple things. We need to undo this little holder for the view meter light in order to give us a little more room. Boy, that's really wound around. Hopefully we don't damage that. Okay. Let's see if we can just kind of hold this thing up. Get a look at it. All right, I'm going to try to pop this circuit board loose again. I wish I would have done this before I mounted it back up. Okay, um, what I'm going to just start by doing here is looking at when I move this, everything changed. So we probably got something loose. Uh, so I'm just going to check all these connections and see if anything appears obviously loose. Not seeing anything so far. Um, I'm going to grab another camera and take a few detailed pictures here because uh, I don't have a schematic for this thing, so I want to make sure I know where we were to begin with. All right. I think. Well, I was going to pause you, but I think this this won't take too long. You know, the old Murphy's Law comes into play quite a bit with this type of thing. You take 25 pictures, and then when there's a moment where you need to look at them, for some reason you just, you didn't quite get that one angle that shows where that one wire went, you know. It's just the most frustrating thing in the world. Alright, now I want to get some shots of the underside of this circuit board. See how much play we have here. Not a lot. Let's try to get some shots of that beast. Work it. I feel like a model photographer here. Oh, that's what we want. Yep. Work it. It's a lot of shots is what I'm saying here. Sounds sketchy. Well, this will allow me to clean up underneath this board a little better, too. Okay, that's uh, quite a few shots. Again, one less than what we're going to end up needing, for sure. But back to uh, trying to figure out what the deal is. Uh, we've got these little bent-over aluminum tabs that are holding the wiring in. So we're going to uh, move these and see if we can... Get a little more shellac. And uh, we might have to unsolder a couple things in order to really get to this. All right. And again, I've talked about this before. I, I don't like cutting things if I can avoid it. These don't bother me as much because they're... Um, they are zip ties which you know you can replace a zip tie but what i don't like doing is cutting those hand tied looms and the early roll and stuff they're little tiny pieces of sometimes they're string on the old uh, uh tube amps you know the looms are all tied up with string beautiful knots i could never seem to replicate and uh but you know this type of thing we can we can replace that okay the Early 201s and 101s used a, a little nylon like thread to tie up the looms and all the wires with. Beautiful. All 
Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not seeing any, you know, blown out calves blown out on the trail. That seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? That Bob Dylan story. Jesus. All right. Well, I don't see anything that uh, has obviously been our problem. I'm going to do some more poking around. You don't have to watch me do this forever. So I'm going to poke around a little bit. When I find an issue, I'll report back. Okay, I poked around, and there's a fair amount of crackling down here everywhere I touched, kind of. Uh, it seems as though if I remove one wire here, I'm going to be able to get a lot more movement on this board. So I'm going to start there. I've taken a good shot of this area, so I hopefully can get this back together correctly. So let's flip this over. I had a catastrophic failure the other day. Uh, it's just going to cause me so much uh, grief, and that is this this box flipped completely upside down and all these came out so now i gotta look at every single one of these when it comes time to uh, pick them out of there they all got jumbled up so it's just a, a nightmare but hopefully this will allow us well, we're still binding up somewhere huh which one is tight Okay, anyway, I'll uh, get to the bottom of that, and uh, I should be able to work on it like this, I think. We only have about uh, I don't know, 12 electrolytics on here, so I think, you know, they should be done anyway. They're eventually going to need to be done. So I'm going to start by just redoing all these caps, and uh, we'll give it a test then and see how it likes it. All right. Okay, people, we uh, just finished up doing the board, we being me, and uh, actually I'm not done, I just remembered i got to reconnect this wire, but it's going to show you our progress here. Um, I'm a little disappointed in my job here, I guess it's alright, but I like these to be flush and straight when they're done. Uh, but anyway, everything seems to be good, we had all the caps we needed, so that's all good. So now I'm just going to attach this uh, wire that we took off in order to give ourselves a little more flexibility here and uh, we'll give it a test. I guess I'll show you one piece of soldering here just uh, if anybody's interested but that's all it is is reattaching this wire. I know what I'm going to do this evening which is kind of a bummer but uh, that was easy enough. I'm going to go through that um, container and sort all those out because I wasted so much time picking up each individual one. I mean it is that is such an unfortunate disaster but it, as I was pulling it out the top came loose and then they're all mixed up and as much as I'm gonna hate doing that I hate more just going through and what is this? What is this? So we're gonna have to do it. No. Oh. Okay I might as well show this little reassembly here. And we need the two Allen heads and two screws. I believe those are the ones. So, probably I snapped the board back on. That seemed to go all right. I looked everywhere for what, you know, where I thought we would find a little plastic. You remember we, I found that little chunk, but uh, I couldn't see where one would have gone, so I don't know what else to do at this point. I hope you're seeing this all right. I, I can't tell what the camera's looking at. Okay, I'm not going to tighten everything down just yet because we may end up having to go back in here. I don't remember these being countersunk screws. I don't know what else I would have taken them out of. No, these aren't the right screws, but we'll put these in for now. It'll just hold it. Actually, we're just going to leave that out for now. Okay, 
Uh, there we are. Fingers crossed. I'm going to plug it in. We'll check it out. Okay, we're all plugged in. Yes, we are. Check. 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 We got nothing. Check. 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 Well, that's disappointing, isn't it? Check. We're kind of in the same boat we were in before. Check. 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 Uh-oh. Check. Okay, that's something. Check. 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 All right, we've made improvements, I guess you could say. Check. A little leery of these switches. So let's turn that volume down. We've got one big uh, capacitor here I didn't replace because it, I thought it was mainly to do with uh, this treble and bass control, but I think we might try that one too. All right, back on mic. Check, check. Wow, how can it come and go like that? Check, check, check. Check. All right. Well, saga continues. Okay, progress is made, and it's only been a minute since I last shut the camera off. But check, check. One, one. Check. And here is our issue. Check, check. Now I took it out here and put it in the put it in the back to check it. Check. 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 Hmm. I wonder if that's loose on the board or if it's loose back here. Check. Let's check the board, I guess. Check. All right, one more time. We gotta follow this beast. Check. 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 All right, the way we're going to check this is we're going to isolate this and wiggle the front of it. And then we can isolate it here and wiggle the back. And it sure seems like that's our issue. You see what I'm saying? If we hold it here, so it doesn't move in the back and wiggle it at the front, we should hear the crackle there. If we hold it here so it can't move at the front and wiggle it here, and this is where we hear our crackle. So, uh, you know, it's just my technique for figuring out where the crackle originates. Is it the back of the wire or the front? So we got an issue here. So this is great news. It might have been all it was from the beginning, but, you know, we've got nice new caps all the way through so it's not for naught all right it's a pretty similar word but i think you know what i'm saying all right i'll just do this on camera uh if anybody's still with me because this has been a long rambler we got bob dylan we got yuko channel oh, god bless you yuko we got uh a lot of stuff's been happening here <clears throat> okay Chan means uh, girl, basically in Japanese, a young, cute girl in this instance. Okay, this sure seemed like our issue, but why would that, you wouldn't think that would bother anything, but let's plug her in there loose and see what happens. Where's old Greenie? There it is. Oh, she's still hot. Check. Okay, there's a lot of checking and troubleshooting and trying to figure out what this might be. So I've just fast forwarded through this. This video has gotten way too long. So, uh, but if you want to look at it, you can see what's happening there. Uh, not much. A lot of checking. Check. Now we've lost. Uh, we lost everything again. Check. 
All right, I don't know who's still with me. So uh, this is going to continue on, you know, if nobody's with me. <laughs> but uh, check. Let's see if uh, I'm going to see if I can figure this out, and I'll again report back. Okay, I guess I'm going to go after these caps that are on this little smaller circuit board. So we're going to pull these two off. Oh, thank you. That's not always the easiest thing to do. I found my other tool. This thing, you know, they're both uh, 12 millimeter, but this thing is awful tight. I don't know why it, the tolerances just aren't that good. Oh, no, this is a 10. Don't you know? 11. All right. Let's see how much room we get with this out. Probably going to have to undo something. I'll flip this around and show you what's going on back here. This is an unusual little circuit, ooh, circuit board here. So, uh, what we've got is this little board here. And it really looks like I'm going to have to undo this in order to get to it at all. That's a bummer. Oh, wait a minute. Give her the old flipperoo. We can. All right, let's do the prudent thing here. Dear Prudence, uh, won't you come out to play? We're going to take a picture, numerous pictures, one less than we're going to need. But let's take pictures of all these. What I want to document here just is everything, but. Uh, Especially the orientation of these capacitors, in case I forget, uh, you know, which way is the negative facing here. That's blurry as hell. Uh, virtually no value. All right. But I think with this many shots... I would hope we have it. Iron's heating up, and uh, I guess I'm just going to go after these. We might as well do them all. We can say this thing's been completely recapped. So I'm going to do those, and uh, hopefully that's the end of our journey. Okay, we're going to do one more cap on camera here. we got this big hanger on here, and uh, this will be an easy one to do and an easy one to show. But this, anybody that's done any of this, this is all common sense, but uh, let's get this off. Just connecting back on me. All right. But uh, what I want to do is, again, we want to make sure we're in the same spot. So negative is this side. And then I just use this cap and pre-cut my leads so they're uh, roughly the same length and uh, we were negative out so let's get this back in there now i'm going to pre-tin i don't know if you can see this or not uh, i'm just going to heat these up and put a little bit of solder on the ends of these ahead of time makes it more likely to uh, you know connect easy remember negative was out Maybe was throwing off some BTUs on me. All right, and uh, our red wire went here. So let's get this thing ready to go back in. All right, that's not the best job, but we'll clean that up in a second. Well, people, 
Check. 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 Uh, I finished that up and put it back in, and I'm happy to say, check. 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 We've got some echo. Check. 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 One. 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 You know, I've heard more echoes. Check. 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 But we are completely capped. And we have pretty decent echo. It doesn't oscillate like I'd like it to. Uh, possible. The adjuster's the adjuster's way down in here, so I uh, can't really do it from that angle. Check, 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 check. One, one, one. Check, 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 check. We're getting close to oscillating. Check, check. We're definitely making good progress. So. Uh, I'm going to hang it up for tonight. It's about 7 o'clock. I've been on this thing about two and a half hours at least. Uh, I'll come back down probably the day after tomorrow. i got a busy day tomorrow. And we'll see if we can get coax a few more out of it. Check, check, check. Okay, people, it's the next day. And uh, I've done a couple things here off camera. I pulled these screws off and went over the wire wheel. Sent one across the room. Spent about 20 minutes looking for it. Found it. That was that good. Was good. Uh, and then hit those with some flat black. They're pretty rusty on the back, and if I just touched them up, you know, they're going to rust up again right away. So we cleaned them up, hit them with some paint. Next, uh, I'm back. I had this all kind of back together, and now I'm back because the only way to get to this one adjustment is right here, and it's not an easy place to get to. So we're going to try to tweak some more uh, echo out of this beast. Let's see what we get. Check, check, check. I got a little sidetracked too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it actually. But check, check, check. 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 I'm tired of uh, fighting with my pliers and needle nose, and I'm, I'm gonna make a little rack. I think. Check, 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 check. We're getting a little more. Check, 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 check. All right, well, it's definitely an improvement now. Let's go back to the other one. Check, 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 check. And see if we can coax a little more out of her. This is a little hairy right now. We got, you know, things are, as you can see, not tightened down in any way. One false move. If we ground something out here, wouldn't be good. Check, 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 check. I'm traveling down the road, and I'm flirting with disaster. It's an old Molly Hatchet tune. Check, 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 I sped this up and did a lot of checking and was able to tweak some more out of it. One, 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 check, 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 check. 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 All right. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. I'm going to tweak it a little bit more. Uh, you know, people, I'm sure you get tired of hearing check. So we're going to tweak it and uh, we'll see what we get. All right. It was just a couple seconds later and. We are officially oscillating out. I think that's perfect. Uh, I'm going to button this back up. I'm going to go grab those uh, screws, see if they're dry. Uh, I'll show you my technique here for uh, spraying screws. It certainly is nothing, you know, overly scientific, but um, I just poke a hole in a piece of cardboard, and that allows the screws to sit out. So you're allowed to, you know, paint basically all the way to the bottom. These got pushed in a little bit, but, uh, you know, that way you can get around and paint uh, every aspect of the screw head. They're a little bit uh, damp yet, so I'm going to uh, chuck them in front of the heater and let them dry up good. And then we'll start putting this a bad boy uh, back together. Ready? Let's go. All right, people, I think it's time to put this thing back together. So let me wipe this down. Uh, we got good oscillation. I painted up these things. I cleaned up these RCAs and uh, these plugins a little bit back here. So let's go grab our 
oh, it's already over here, our painted pieces. They're good and dry here. So I'll uh, start with these big ones, I think. Yeah. Actually, I think I'm going to start by putting the this whole unit back together. So let's get this up here. Okay, those look better painted. Don't you agree? There's a fine line between doing too much and not doing enough, in my opinion. And it comes to, it's with everything, you know, basically. Uh, and what I mean is, you know, we, I could have taken these off and sanded them down and painted them, and, and it might have been a good idea because they're pretty, you know, these, these little fissures under the paint. Uh, but then these wouldn't look the same as this and there's no way to really solve this without painting everything and then you can't uh, you're gonna lose all your uh, Printing on here. So, you know, you have to decide Where you're gonna stop These are interesting little little things here. They got a little lug stamped into them So you you know line those up that lug in the hole and it keeps them from moving. It's a cost-saving uh, exercise I think because Otherwise, you would have to put two screws in there in order to keep these from turning. So, uh, you know, somebody at some point in time discovered that, you know, let's just stamp a lug in there. We can save a screw. Kind of interesting. Uh, I used to teach for Toyota and uh, Aishin and a lot of these Japanese companies. And uh, a lot of these guys, their whole, their whole job is to try to figure out how to save money by cutting corners essentially I hate to say it that way but that's essentially what we're doing is figuring out ways to cut corners save a little bit of wire here or a little bit of material there and it might be fractions of a cent even but you know over on a run of a million vehicles that can turn out to be a pretty substantial savings okay we got that back on now um, let's tuck this back up where it belongs and where does it belong right there or right there right there okay I got that put away now we got to route this uh, I don't remember. Let me plug this in. We'll figure out the ideal location for that VU meter because I don't really remember where it sat. But we want to illuminate this thing the best we can. Was it from the side or was it from the top? Hmm. Probably the top. That seems awful. By oh, right behind it, probably. We just want to light the blue up, I think. All right. That had quite a few cranks on it, if I remember right. All right. That's looking good, right? It's right in the VU and nice and bright. Okay. Uh, I believe we are all set here. We have a few of these things. Uh, I usually go back with a magnet and kind of clean up the, the top of the desk because otherwise these little pieces of capacitors end up in your sock and that's a nightmare okay oh god i got a lot of them over here all right uh i think we're ready to i mean let's just double check before we get carried away here but um new capacitors everywhere i didn't replace the one in the vu meter it seems to be working fine so we're just going to let that one ride uh the belt i removed it and cleaned it. it's in good shape uh I lubricated this I've adjusted these to the point where it sounds pretty good. I think we, yeah, I don't know, wouldn't be a bad idea to test it one more time before I put it back in the cabinet. So let's do that. And uh, where's my test tape? Just to be sure. We've kind of moved things around since. Back to that theory of doing too much or not enough. My dad uh, restores old cars. Uh, I got that from him. He bought a 37... Uh, it was a 36 Ford two-door, 
And uh, check, check. It was check. Check. Check, 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 check. It was a really nice old original car. Original paint, a couple dings in the fenders. It really looked good. It was just kind of just the way it was. It was the way it should have been left. But he, the running boards were missing chunks of rubber and cracked up. And he thought, I'm going to get some new running board covers and then we'll call it a day with this original old car. So he got the new running board covers and put it on. Looked great. However, that those beautiful running boards made the the fenders look pretty bad, so check, 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 check. fenders were all dented up and scratched and a little bit of surface rust. Well, I'll just paint the fenders because the running boards are too nice. And then, you know, the hood didn't look right and eventually ended up restoring this whole car because he bought a pair of uh, running board covers. So should have left well enough alone. All right, let's check it. Uh, speed check. 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 Repeat. Check. 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 All right, we are oscillating to, to beat the band. Check. 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 Bass. Bass. Treble. Bass. You know when you start check, check. shaking the change drawer, change coil. Check, check. The little thing that holds my change. You got base. All right. Uh, I'm going to put her back in the cabinet. Awesome. All right. Typically with these machines, there's an orientation. You know, there's a front or back or there's a lip on here. But this case is the same either way it appears. So we're just going to put her in and try to line her up. And uh, see if we can get it. Oof, I should have went the other way. We got the handle on this side. So let's try it this way. And you know how we struggle here. We're going to try to this technique first. And that's just make sure we're semi lined up here. I think we're good. All right, perfect. We should be able to just screw it back together. Well, I ended up making that little uh, pliers holder that I was thinking about, and I, I'm happy with the way that turned out. I brought over a bunch of wood and found a bunch of different pieces of metal and tubing, and I thought I'm gonna all these different methods I'm gonna use to to do this. Oh god, that was the easiest that's ever d happened. Remember, we had that really rusty one. I cleaned it up and uh, hit it with some oil so that. Uh, Hopefully we can inhibit that rust from coming back for a while. But anyway, I had all kinds of different ideas for this pliers holder, and I'll show you here. And when I get done with this, it turned out really nice, and it was the so it was so simple. I had wood and old bicycle parts that I was going to use, and I overthought it to the point where I'd really gotten carried away, and it turned out to be a super simple. Solution. All right, here's some of the wood and bicycle parts I had gathered and thought about using. I ended up bending up that piece of wire and drilling two little holes in the corner of my wood tabletop and mounted that wire in there, and it's perfect. Okay, Diatone EM606. Uh, let's get that test tape out and get one of these Diatone tapes in. This is going to really make it. Again, it's a shame we have to have a tape in there because they look so good without a tape. But if you are going to have a tape, you might as well have a Gaiatone tape in there. All right. I'd call that a success. We uh, had some hurdles to overcome. And it wasn't an easy board to work on or adjust, but uh, I think we got it. Not bad. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? Beautiful. I've got the uh, copy of the original spec sheet to go with this in Japanese. And uh, this Gaiatone tape that, again, I've made from a karaoke tape. And uh, this photocopied one original that I had gotten. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's what it would have looked like. Beautiful. View meter's looking good. Ooh, that's a pretty noisy old tape, isn't it? My goodness, what's the deal with that?
Why so noisy? All right, we're gonna have to tweak that, but anyway, we're uh, nearing the finish line here. All right, people, here it is. She's finally finished. I made a new tape for it. Uh, the other guy tone tape that I'm gonna include with this uh, is pretty noisy and they can be opened up and cleaned or lubricated with a little silicone inside and they sound a lot better. Uh, what we're hearing is, you know, just the circular tape mechanism turning around inside there. Uh, but this tape sounds pretty good. Check. Check, 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 And we got great oscillation. I'm bordering on too much, to be honest. Check, 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 But everything's looking good and sounding good. Uh, I demo this in another video with a VX66, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time demoing it here. Uh, you can check that out if you want to see that video too. But uh, this video is approaching full length cinematic feature length video, which is way over the top. So, so we're going to wrap, wrap it up, it up here, here, but, uh, but it's, it's all, all good, good, people. The M606. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Check out Vintage Audio Nagoya uh, on Instagram for uh, almost daily pictures of really cool stuff. And uh, thanks for uh, sticking it out this long if anybody has. And uh, give me a like and subscribe if you'd be so kind. Keep rocking vintage gear. Take care.